got six infertile eggs from our female Mexican pygmy rattlesnake. <laughs> he's, he's working on it. There we go. That's a little bit better. There you go, buddy. She did her little head twitch, which means she's about to strike. What is up, fellow humans? Today we've got some really cool stuff happening. We are going to be feeding a bunch of our venomous snakes, including the Gaboon Viper, King Cobra, Meng Shen Viper, and that's right, the Red-Headed Crate, all today. Also, we just had a rattlesnake lay eggs. I know what you're thinking. Rattlesnakes don't lay eggs. What are you talking about? Well, my rattlesnake did. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, we're going to figure out what happened. We're going to pull the eggs and see if they're any good. So let's go ahead and get her out here. She doesn't have a name yet. We gotta give her a name. Her and her future boyfriend both need names. So let's pull her out here. Hello, sweetheart. She's looking pretty good for us. You can see her body weight is looking pretty good considering she just laid almost half a dozen eggs for us. I wanna get a little bit of a closer look at her to make sure that she doesn't have anything left inside her. So we wanna make sure, like I said, that she's not egg bound and that she doesn't have anything in there. There's nothing that I'm seeing that makes me believe that that's an issue. I don't feel anything in there. I don't see anything in there. So let's go ahead and get her in this bucket here. Let's not go towards the camera, lady. And boom, just like that. Go ahead and put her in there. We can look at these little eggs. Let's see how many we've got here. One. Oh, that one broke. Two. Three. Four. And there's another, at least one more in here, five. And then I pulled one the other day that broke. So she laid six, We've got six infertile eggs from our female Mexican pygmy rattlesnake. Those are pretty neat. Hopefully next year we get some actual fertile eggs that we can throw in the incubator. What am I talking about? I just talked about this. They give live birth. I don't know what I'm saying right now. Hopefully she pops out a few babies next year. That would be really cool. Obviously we haven't paired her with the male yet because the male's still too young. It would have been uh, fruitless. So there would have been no need to do that. But next year we'll go ahead and do so. Uh, very cool though, we'll go ahead and save these. Maybe we'll even do a giveaway or something if you want a nasty orange infertile egg for some reason. Uh, but we'll go ahead and put those aside. Uh, now we got to clean out that enclosure because guess what? Uh, she had a lot of poop stored in there that was blocked off by the eggs. So we got to do a nice cleaning of that enclosure and then we're going to be feeding a bunch of venomous snakes right after this. Closure has been cleaned, fresh water has been given, and eggs have been removed. So let's go ahead and put this girl back in her enclosure. There you go. There you go. And now we can go ahead and feed some of our venomous snakes. We have a bunch more cleanings we have to do today, but we're gonna focus on doing some feedings first. So we're gonna feed our King Cobra, our red-headed crate, and our main Shen Viper, and maybe a few others too. So let's grab the food and let's start feeding some snakes. All right, so now we're gonna feed Gabby. I'm gonna do this by hand, of course, because she's really, really calm. I'm just kidding, I enjoy living and having all of my limbs attached. So we're gonna feed her using these nice, big, thick tongs. Now make sure you're paying attention because the Gaboon Viper has one of the fastest strikes on the planet. So you don't wanna blink or you will miss it, I guess. You could always hit the rewind button, but let's go ahead and see if she's in the mood to eat. She did her little head twitch, which means she's about to strike. There we go, look at that. That was a heck of a strike. She got in there fast, hard, and deep with her fangs. Those are two inch fangs, so you know that it gets the job done. She has a mouthful, and hopefully she swallows. I don't know how long it'll take for her to finish, but uh, they usually take their time. So we're gonna go ahead and let her take care of that, and we're gonna move on to our beautiful King Cobra Shelby. We've got a nice big ball python to feed her, so let's see how she manages. All right, guys, we have probably the biggest ball python that we've ever tried to feed Shelby. She's a growing girl, so that's why we are scaling up. She's probably around the eight to eight and a half feet 
uh, long mark now. She's definitely grown since we got her about a year and a half ago. Let's go ahead and open this up. She's already given us a little hood here. You can see she's definitely hungry. Little does she know she could just go over there to get around that and bite me, but she doesn't want to do that anyway. She would much rather bite this snake. It's a little bit big for these tongs, but I'm sure we can manage. Hello. Hello. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come. There we go. She was locked onto my hand for a second there. I don't know if you could see me readjust as I needed. Now, one thing about King Cobras is that they are kind of known as the pit bull of the snake world. When they bite, they tend to hold on. And you can hear her huffing at me. Now, these are snakes that can actually growl. Not a lot of snakes have the functional uh, capability to growl like these snakes do, but you can hear her growling when I, when I kind of pull on this a little bit. There you go. All right, let's go ahead. That did not work at all. Let's go ahead and put that in there for you, sweetheart, and close the door just like that. And you can see she's got a huge mouthful there. That is a big ball python for her, but I think she'll be able to take care of it without too many problems. Uh, that's going to last her for a while, which is good because snakes are expensive as feeders. So uh, that should hopefully last her two or three weeks. And we are going to go ahead and see if she's able to take care of that. I hope she can. I think she can. The one I fed her last time was only a little bit smaller, so she should be able to finish that off. Let's go ahead and close this up. Let's go ahead and close this up. Can you stop growling at me? Now she won't stop growling at me. And next up, we're gonna feed our Ming Shen Viper. If you have snakes to feed like Gabby here and need a good online source to get feeders, make sure to go to coldbloodedcafe.com and use code LAMP20 to get free shipping on your first order. They have the best frozen rodents around. So moving on, we are gonna be feeding our beautiful endangered Ming Shen Viper, John Cena. Now, he just recently shed his skin, as you can probably tell, he's Got his fresh skin already, or it's still in there, just sitting around. I have to pull that out, but he's got his bright, beautiful green camouflage colors out. So we're gonna slide this door open and feed him. He's a chick eater predominantly, so that's what we are feeding him today, is a frozen thawed chick. They do eat a lot of birds in the wild, so this would be a pretty natural prey item for them. Let's go ahead and open this. Keep your eyes on John here. He likes to strike out when I open up the enclosure door. So make sure you got a good view of him here. And just like that. And he, you can see he's wiggling his tail around back there. They have a caught a lure on the end of their tail. They will wiggle that around when they are hungry to try and lure and prey. You can see it's a bright neon yellow green that looks kind of like a worm. Right, he's mimic, mimicking a worm with that tail action uh, to try and lure in prey, whether it be birds, frogs, or various other prey items. Different snakes will have different lures on their tails and will target different prey. Oh, steady now, John. Steady now, John. All right, let's just bring it in front of his face here. There we go. Good job, Johnny boy. You can see his beautiful head pattern there. Absolutely beautiful snake. One of my favorites. Uh, truly a dream snake of mine to own. And I am really glad that I am able to do so. Now we're gonna try and feed Crady Perry our beautiful red-headed crate. Hopefully she eats. She is a bit finicky when it comes to eating. We were able to get her to eat last week, but she only ate it off the ground. She didn't eat it off the tongs. So hopefully she'll eat. It is also earlier in the day. I usually feed her around 11 p.m. to midnight, uh, sometimes as late as 2, 3 in the morning. So hopefully she eats. It's around 7.30 p.m. right now. So definitely around a few hours earlier than normal. At the earliest we would normally do it is around 9, uh, but usually it's more like midnight on average probably. 
Let's go ahead and see if she is willing to eat. Oh, there she is. Got her attention. The question is, will she jump on it? So, she doesn't look like she's gonna eat it off the tongs, although she was a little interested. I'm thinking maybe it's a little too dry in there. So we're gonna leave it in there and we're gonna spray down her enclosure. Now, this is a species that has really, really high humidity in the wild. So I try to give her a really solid spray down of once a day, just to make sure that it is nice and humid in there for her. We go ahead and really give it a nice spray down. We have a lot of moss all over, which will retain moisture really, really well in there for her. Um, now it has only been around five days to a week since she last ate, but it was a pretty small ball python, which is why we're giving her another small one today, just to try and make sure she's keeping her weight nicely because these snakes, from everything I've heard, about people that have kept them unsuccessfully in the past or successfully for a period of time. They all say that they crash really, really quickly when they start to lose their weight. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we do the best we can to keep her as healthy as possible. She still looks good. She still has really good weight. She seems to be in good health. She's just a bit more finicky about eating than she used to be, which is unfortunate. We used to get her to eat off the tongs pretty much every single time. Now it's pretty hit or miss, but we went ahead and sprayed it down really, really well. And I'm gonna leave that ball python in there for her. I'm gonna try and readjust it just so the head of the ball python is kind of peeking in there. So we're gonna leave it in there and see if she's able to get that done. Hopefully she does end up eating it. If not, I will probably have to end up giving Shelby here another snack, which I don't think she needs considering the size of the snack she already has. Uh, looks like John is finishing up his chick down here uh, around his neck area. You can see the skin between his scales and there's a nice little fang readjustment, not a full one, uh, just a little one. Maybe he was just opening his mouth to aid in getting that chick down his throat. Maybe he'll give us a nice full fang adjustment. Ooh, that one's a little bit better. Still not a full one though. He's working on it. <laughs> he's, he's working on it. There we go, that's a little bit better. There you go, buddy. Very nice. Absolutely beautiful snake, and he just finished up that chick like it was light work. So really good news, guys. I went back in there later on, and Crady Perry had started eating. And this morning, when I went back in to check up and make sure she finished it off, she had. So she did eat the ball python that we left in there for her last night, which is absolutely fantastic i think it was just a little bit dry in there or maybe just a little bit too early on in the day like i mentioned we usually feed her a little bit later on i actually went out of town the other week and fed her at like 2 30 or 3 in the morning of the night before which was a big pain in the butt but i had to make sure she would eat all right so now we're gonna go ahead and feed our beautiful female boom sling uh, her name is Fergie. She is in the back right corner of her enclosure there. Hopefully we don't scare her too much. She is a shy feeder. So hopefully she eats this chick for us since she's out in the back corner. I think there's a decent chance of her eating it off the tongs. Let's see if we can be of any interest to her. And there we go. Nice. She actually came right out for it. So like I said, this is Furby, our beautiful female boom slang. Absolutely gorgeous. Pretty much solid black female boom slang. Uh, she has been doing really, really well for us, eating consistently since we got her a couple of years ago. Doing absolutely fantastic. Now, something about this snake is that they are sometimes considered to be the most toxic venomous snake in all of Africa, right up there in the conversation with the black mamba. Now, there are a little bit of conflicting reports and studies when it comes to determining who's actually the most venomous snake for, in Africa, but it's always either uh, the boom slang or the black mamba. Now, these guys I don't consider to be as dangerous as the black mamba. 
Uh, one, because they are rear fanged. And what that means is that they don't have those typical front fangs like most other venomous snakes do. Now, that's not to say that their venom isn't extremely dangerous because it certainly is, but their venom delivery system is worse, although they have a much better one than most rear fang venomous snakes. The major thing is that the venom yield is so much lower when it comes to rear fang snakes, whereas a black mamba is gonna have a much higher venom yield, not to mention they get bigger and they are faster, and they tend to be a bit more pissed off. Boom slings tend to be more shy, especially in the wild, uh, compared to black mambas, which will oftentimes stand their ground. Uh, so I would definitely not put them at the same level as the black mamba, but they are very quick, very agile, and very venomous, so you definitely don't want to mess with one. Not to mention that they have one of the most just insane venoms of any venomous snake. Their venom is extremely hemorrhagic, meaning it'll make you bleed from every orifice in your body, your eyes, your ears, your nose, and anything else you can think of. It's not a pleasant way to go. We fed a bunch of our snakes. We're gonna feed a bunch more and we have a bunch more cleanings to do, but that's all the time we have for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. My cat is screaming at the door right now. Uh, but I will see you all on the next one. Thank you, and see you later.